Hello everyone, God bless you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us here at The Good Book Project. Here at this channel, in our Chronological Bible in a Year video podcast, to the glory of our Lord, we have reached day 258. Today is Friday, September the 15th in the year of our Lord 2023. And yesterday for day 257, we continued on in the book of Daniel, reading the chapters 4 through 6, which included now Nebuchadnezzar having another dream and Daniel interpreting that dream. Nebuchadnezzar is humiliated, eating grass like oxen, and at the end he praises the Lord. After which his son Belshazzar reigns as king over him, and then has a feast using the Lord's vessels to serve all of the people. A hand on the wall gives a writing, Mene Mene Tekel Eupharsin, and nobody knows how to interpret it. He sets out a goal to have it interpreted, and whoever would interpret it would become the third highest reigning person in the land and given a chain of gold to be put on their neck. After which no one can interpret it, Daniel is brought before him and interprets the dream correctly in front of him and Belshazzar dies that same day, with Darius of the Medes, king of the Medes, takes over. We read now a plot against Daniel to take over and kill him because he would not serve their gods of the Persians and the Medes. So they devise a law saying that no one was to pray to any other foreign god except to the king for 30 days. Daniel, who is still following the Lord faithfully and truly, is caught and brought before the king. And because the king could not go back on the law, they threw him in the den of lions to execute him. But the, the angel comes down from the Lord and the Lord uses the angel to shut up its mouth. And the Lord works a miracle and none of the lions end up killing Daniel. They only are there with him, just relaxing altogether. And at the end, Darius sees this and has everyone who plotted against Daniel thrown into the same den of lions and they are all killed. Darius makes a decree and praises the Lord. And for today, day 258, we continue on in the book of Daniel, beginning today with chapter 7. I will pray us into the word for today, and we will get right into it. Lord, we come before your throne today in the mighty name of Jesus, just thanking you for bringing us to the end of the work week. Thank you that in your provision and in your mercy over our lives, you've covered us every single day. You've given us health, and you've given us all of the resources to go through your word. And Lord, as we go throughout your word today in the book of Daniel, we ask for heavenly guidance and wisdom and understanding as we continue on now into the apocalyptic section of the visions of Daniel in this book. And we ask for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all say, Amen. And for today, day 258, we continue on in the book of Daniel, beginning today with chapter 7. And we're going to do this as we always do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Word of God reads. Daniel 7. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head while on his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the sky broke out of the out on the great sea. Four great animals came up from the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I watched until its wings were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand on two feet as a man. A man's heart was given to it. Behold, there was another animal, a second, like a bear. It was raised up on one side, and three ribs were in its mouth between its teeth. They said this to it, Arise, devour much flesh. After this I saw, and behold, another, like a leopard, which had on its back four wings of a bird. The animal also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, there was a fourth animal, awesome, powerful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet. It was different from all the animals that were before it. It had ten horns. 
I considered the horns, and behold, there came up amongst them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking arrogantly. I watched until thrones were placed, and one who was ancient of days sat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came out from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were opened. I watched at that time because of the voice of the arrogant words which the horn spoke. I watched even until the animal was slain and its body destroyed, and it was given to be burnt with fire. As for the rest of the animals, their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, there came with the clouds of the sky one like a son of man, and he came even to the ancient of days, and they brought him near before him. Dominion was given him, and glory, and a kingdom, that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which will not pass away, and his kingdom one that will not be destroyed. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was grieved within my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near to one of those who stood by, and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me, and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great animals, which are four, are four kings, who will arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High will receive the kingdom, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth concerning the fourth animal, which was different from all of them, exceedingly terrible, whose teeth were of iron, and its nails of bronze, which devoured, broke in pieces, and stamped the residue with its feet. And concerning the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn which came up, and before which three fell, even that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke arrogantly, whose look was more stout than its fellows, I saw in the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High, and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. So he said, The fourth animal will be a fourth kingdom on earth, which will be different from all the kingdoms, and will devour the whole earth, and will tread it down and break it in pieces. As for the ten horns, ten kings will arise out of this kingdom. Another will arise after them, and he will be different from the former, and he will put down three kings. He will speak words against the Most High, and will wear out the saints of the Most High. He will plan to change the times and the laws, and they will be given into his hand until a time and times and a half and half a time. But the judgment will be set, and they will take away his dominion, to consume and to destroy it to the end, the kingdom and the dominion. And the greatest of the kingdoms under the whole sky will be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominions will serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts troubled me greatly, and my face was changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Daniel 8. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me. Even to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first, I saw the vision. Now it was so that when I saw, I was in the citadel of Susa, which is in the province of Elam. I saw in the vision, and I was by the river Ulai. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram, which had two horns, stood before the river. The two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. I saw the ram pushing westward, northward and southward. No animals could stand before him. There wasn't any who could deliver out of his hand. 
but he did according to his will and magnified himself. As I was considering, behold, a male goat came from the west over the surface of the whole earth and didn't touch the ground. The goat had a notable horn between his eyes. He came to the ram that had the two horns, which I saw standing before the river, and ran on him in the fury of his power. I saw him come close to the ram, and he was moved with anger against him, and struck the ram and broke his two horns. There was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled on him. There was no one who could deliver the ram out of his hand. The male goat magnified himself exceedingly. When he was strong, the great horn was broken, and instead of it there came up four notable horns towards the west, towards the winds, the four winds of the sky. Out of one of them came out a little horn which grew exceedingly great towards the south, and towards the east, and towards the glorious land. It grew great, even to the army of the sky, and it cast down some of the army and of the stars to the ground and trampled on them. Yes, it magnified itself even to the prince of the army, and it took away from him the continual burnt offering, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. The army was given over to it together with the continual burnt offering through disobedience. It cast down truth to the ground, and it did its pleasure and prospered. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to that certain one who spoke, How long will the vision about the continual burnt offering and the disobedience that makes desolate to give both the sanctuary and the army to be trodden underfoot? He said to me, To two thousand and three hundred evenings and mornings, even the sanctuary will be cleansed. When I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. Then behold, there stood before me someone with the appearance of a man. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, son of man, for the vision belongs to the time of the end. Now as he was speaking with me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face towards the ground, but he touched me and set me upright. He said, Behold, I will make you know what will be in the latter time of the indignation, for it belongs to the appointed time of the end. The ram, which you saw, that had the two horns, they are the kings of Media and Persia. The rough male goat is the king of Greece. The great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. As for that which was broken, in the place where four stood up, four kingdoms will stand out of the nation, but not with his power. In the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have come up to the full, a king of fierce face and understanding riddles will stand up. His power will be mighty, but not by his own power. He will destroy awesomely and will prosper in what he does. He will destroy the mighty ones and the holy people. Through his policy, he will cause deceit to prosper in his hand. He will magnify himself in his heart, and he will destroy many in their security. He will also stand up against the prince of princes, but he will be broken without human hands. The vision of the evenings and mornings, which has been told, is true. But seal up the vision, for it belongs to many days to come. I, Daniel, fainted and was sick for some days. Then I rose up and did the king's business. I wondered at the vision, but no one understood it. Daniel 9 In the first year of Darius the son of Ahasuerus, of the offspring of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the, book, by the books of the number of the years about which the Lord's word came to Jeremiah, the prophet, for the accomplishing of the desolations of Jerusalem, even seventy years. I set my face to the Lord God to seek pray, by prayer and petitions, with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and made confession, and said, O oh, Lord, the great and dreadful God, who keeps covenant and loving kindness with those who love him, 
and keep his commandments. We have sinned, and have dealt perversely, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even turning aside from your precepts and from your ordinances. We haven't listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. Lord, righteousness belongs to you, but to us confusion of face, as it is today to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and to all Israel who are near and who are far off, through all the countries where you have driven them, because of their trespass that they have trespassed against you. Lord, to us belongs confusion of face to our kings and to our princes and to our fathers, because we have sinned against you. To the Lord our God belongs mercies and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. We haven't obeyed the Lord our God's voice to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants the prophets. Yes, all Israel have transgressed your law, turning aside, that they should not obey your voice. Therefore the curse and the oath written in the law of Moses the servant of God has poured out on us, for we have sinned against him. He has confirmed his words which he spoke against us and against our judges who judged us, by bringing on us a great evil. For under the whole sky such has not been done as has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil has come on us. Yet we have not entreated the favor of our Lord, of the Lord our God, that we should turn from our iniquities and have discernment in your truth. Therefore the Lord has watched over the evil and brought it on us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works which he does, and we have not obeyed his voice. Now, Lord our God, who has brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have gotten yourself renown, as it is today, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. Lord, according to all your righteousness, please let your anger and your wrath be turned away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, because of, your, of our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers. Jerusalem and your people have become a reproach to all who are around us. Now therefore, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant and to his petitions, and cause your face to shine on your sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. My God, turn your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations, and the city which is called by your name. For we do not present our petitions before you for our righteousness, but for your great mercy's sake. Lord, hear. Lord, forgive. Lord, listen and do. Don't defer for your name, for your own sake, my God, because your city and your people are called by your name. While I was speaking, praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of my God, Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening offering. He instructed me and talked with me, and said, Daniel, I have now come to give you wisdom and understanding. At the beginning of your petitions the commandment went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore consider the matter and understand the vision. Seventy weeks are decreed on your people and on your holy city to finish disobedience, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in an everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and discern from that, that from going, that from the going out of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem to the anointed one, the prince, will be seven weeks and sixty-two weeks. It will be built again with street and moat, even in troubled times. After the sixty-two weeks, the anointed one will be cut off and will have nothing. The people of the prince who come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. It ends. Its end will be with a flood, and war will be even to the end. Desolations are determined. He will make a firm covenant with many for one week, 
In the middle of the week, he will cause the sacrifice and the offering to cease. On the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate. And even to the decreed full end, wrath will be poured out on the desolate. Thank you, Lord, for your holy word. So while we were reading the hope literature contained in the first six chapters of the book of Daniel, now we have entered into the apocalyptic portion of the visions of Daniel. We see Daniel having a vision here of the, fir the first vision he receives is the vision of four beasts coming out of the water, all of them, one being greater than the next, with the fourth being the greatest. And all at one point or another, they are given dominion over the earth. Then Daniel receives a vision of the Ancient of Days. The Ancient of Days is God the Father, in which there is a fiery throne set which he sits on and judges the people. And there is a vision of the Son of Man. That person is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is given to power and dominion and glory and is to be worshipped throughout all of the land. We will read in. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I will just reiterate these points. Daniel chapter 7 verse 9. I watched until thrones were placed, and one who was ancient of days sat. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure was like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came out from before him. Thousands of thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were opened. I watched at that time because of the voice of the arrogant words which the horn spoke. I watched even until the animal was slain and its body destroyed, and it was given to be burnt with fire. As for the rest of the animals, their dominion was taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, there came with the clouds of the sky one like a son of man and he came even to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him dominion was given him and glory and a kingdom that all the peoples nations and languages should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which will not pass away and his kingdom one that will not be destroyed so we read here why this son of man is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who mentions in the book of Mark and elsewhere in the Gospels that this Son of Man is a reference to him. And Son of Man is one of the many ways that Jesus refers to himself. So we see the Ancient of Days, God the Father, and we see the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Son of God. And we read, see visions of this happening, Daniel sees. Daniel then asks one of the angels that are there for interpretation for what is going on to which they give. Daniel receives also another vision of a ram and a goat. And this time we have an angel sent to Daniel to interpret the dream because he couldn't understand his vision. And the angel Gabriel is sent to him to tell him about the dream. This is also the first time in the Bible that an angel is mentioned by name the angel Gabriel. So we read now of the identification of the ram and the goat, the goat being Greece, which the angel Gabriel tells him. And then in the last chapter, we read of a blessing and a prayer that Daniel makes to the Lord to speak to the Lord about his people, Israel, as he was reading the book of Jeremiah about, Daniel realized that by reading the book of Jeremiah that the 70 years of desolation were almost complete for the people. And he put on sackcloth and ashes, which is the typical attire for mourning, in order to pray to, to the Lord for the people. And then there is a prophecy of the 70 weeks to which the angel Gabriel interprets for Daniel as well. So now we see visions and visions of prophecies of things to come that the prophet Daniel is now seeing. And with that, 
day 258 is complete and i'm so happy you were able to make it out today to complete this work week in the word of god i will pray us out of the word for today and we will go throughout the rest of our day lord we come before your throne today in the mighty name of jesus just thanking you once again for giving us your word thank you throughout all your word we see you and your hand and your sovereignty moving throughout the entire picture nothing is done without your permission and everything is done through you. Nothing can be done to take you by surprise because you are the all-knowing, sovereign God. And Lord, we ask that this book of Daniel remain on our mind as we go throughout the rest of today in our reading. Thank you for showing us how Daniel received the vision of the Son of Man, of the Ancient of Days, how you show yourself to the people. Lord, as we go throughout the rest of today, we dedicate this day to you and ask you to bless it and that we might be blessed by that blessing and that we could be a blessing to someone else. Help us be a reflection of the one to God at all times. Help us be bold for the gospel. Help us to be ready to defend the gospel and help spread the gospel to someone who so desperately needs it. We ask for all these things in the mighty name of Jesus and we all say, Amen. Day 259 is tomorrow to begin a weekend, another weekend that the Lord has given us, and I can't wait for you to return for it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance toward you and give you peace. Peace.